The Avengers Infinity War Gauntlet. This is a cake, you guys. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? I'm really proud of the way that this came out. I'm so excited for Avengers Infinity War. As soon as they talked about like the release date, like four or five years ago, maybe, I knew I was gonna make the gauntlet. I knew it was like that glove, that glove thing you, you, you're showing me, that, that's gonna be a cake. And now it is. So I hope you guys are excited. Let's get started. Now to create this cake, the first thing I did was purchase the gauntlet. It's so cool, isn't it? Oh, this feels amazing, you guys. It just feels like the hand of God just caressing your face. So gentle and soft. So initially I was supposed to buy the smaller version of the Infinity War Gauntlet which was a lot cheaper. But the smaller version also has less detail than this version. Because there is so much detail all over the Gauntlet, I wanted to make sure that I got it just right. When I was doing stuff for Star Wars, I made the Porg cake and I didn't have enough pictures or statues of the Porg. So that's why my Porg looks only kind of like a Porg because I should have waited for the toys so I could buy them and then it would have been perfect. So I shelled out the hundred dollars for this baby. When I brought it home, my mommy was like, how much was that toy? And I was like, fifty dollars? And she was like, that's really expensive. And I was like, I know, right? I was so embarrassed I didn't want to say that I paid a hundred dollars for it. But you know what? I'm gonna use this in the video and I'm gonna get my money's worth. Now to create these cake, I use an adjustable cake pen. I think you've seen these on TV. So you bake your cake in these silicone rings. When they're finished, you just pull them apart and voila, your cake. Now I make a lot of cakes with like makeshift oblong tin foil pans so that I can get the perfect shape for the cake that I'm creating. And this is definitely gonna replace that because you can totally morph the silicone to be the shape that you need it to be. Now let's put this baby to work. The first thing I did was level off my cake using my cake leveler. Look, it works perfectly. No, it doesn't. This took so long. I'm just using vanilla cake, but I dyed it different colors. I wanted each color to match a stone on the gauntlet. So we've got red for the reality stone, purple for the power stone, blue for the space stone, green for the time stone, yellow for the mind stone, and orange for the... orange. Orange for the soul stone. Now I'm gonna stack my cakes on this cake stand that I bought from Germany. It was expensive, you guys. But that way I don't actually have to build the structure. I just, it's like sort of built already for me. I'm not sure if this is a good buy yet because you can't really give this away. You have to get all the pieces back. I thought I could trust my mom with it and I told her like, don't lose any of these pieces, you know, because they were expensive. She threw most of it away. <laughs> can't trust anybody. Can't trust anybody. I'm stacking my cakes and I'm using black buttercream, which automatically means chocolate buttercream. It has to be chocolate, otherwise you'd have to use so much more black food coloring to get this the color black. I'm gonna add some buttercream in between each layer of cake and then just smoothen it out with my offset spatula. Look at it, look at my glove working super hard. This video is gonna pay for this gauntlet. <laughs> Hopefully, I don't know how many people are gonna see it though. Hopefully a lot of people. And I just repeated this process with all of my other cakes. Now the thing that I loved about these cake pans is that it's really easy to bake different sized cakes. Which is great because I wanted to make sure that the cake that I used for the wrist was smaller since I know that it's going to go inwards. Because it actually does get smaller right around the wrist. Once I finished stacking, I gave this a little bit of a carve. It's super high and I kind of wanted to relieve some pressure off the red and the orange layer because I felt like I didn't have enough support. And then very carefully, because it was really wobbling, I placed it into the fridge. After that, I took it out and I started to carve away at my cake with my gauntlet. Even though it looks like it, it doesn't actually grip anything. So every time it looks like it's holding something, I actually just used a hot glue gun and glued it to the inside because it like nothing it doesn't oh uh, gosh i had high hopes for this thing but it actually does nothing i spent like two hours carving this cake because i was using the gauntlet i was determined to use this for carving because i wasn't sure how much use i was going to get out of it once i started adding fondant to the cake because 
Gosh, it was just, I, I just felt like it was gonna be a nightmare. And because we're in like the California summer, which is all year round, the icing in my cake started to soften up, so I decided to just give this baby a crumb coat and place it back into the fridge. This is the last time I work with black food coloring, you guys. I like working with black food coloring because when people eat the cake and their teeth turns black, <laughs> It's so funny <laughs> when they're smiling and their teeth are like, oh my god. But when you're working with black icing inside of a large cake like this, it, it just looks ugly. It gets all over your hands, it gets all over your gauntlet, it makes the white icing look gray. Oh gosh. Never again. Never again. After my cake set up again, I used my gauntlet as a reference. And then with some sculpting tools, I just outlined all of the features. This helped me decide how big I wanted all the fingers to be, how much to carve away in his palm area. It was basically just more carving to make sure I got all the features right. And then all of that carving led to more carving, which led to more carving so that I could refine all of the things that I just carved and then carve some more. <laughs> I really took my time carving this cake. I didn't really have a choice because not only does the gauntlet not grip anything, it's on my left hand and I'm right-handed. So I had to like very slowly like do everything. <laughs> oh, why did I do this to myself? When I was happy with my carving, I placed my cake back into the fridge and I started to work on my infinity stones. I'm using homemade silicone molds with food safe silicone and cordon starch. I was gonna show you this entire process, but I don't actually think I'm doing it properly. So that's why I'm just gonna like skim over this part. You're basically creating what looks like a fondant mixture, but it's not. It's not even edible. Don't try to eat this. I rolled it out with some more cornstarch, and then I just took the gauntlet and used each of the infinity stones to make an impression on the silicone. And I wanted this to look like super professional, you guys. So I used a round cookie cutter to get the shape of the outside. And I'm just going to repeat this process with all of the other stones. I'm curious, how do you think Thanos is gonna stack up as a villain in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? I hope he's terrifying, but Marvel villains, they're kind of terrible, aren't they? They're not scary. I want them to be like, nightmare scary. It actually did pick these up, you guys. It was easy to hold them because they were so thick. That's what she's... To create my stones, I'm using Jolly Ranchers and Lifesavers. And I couldn't find any yellow Jolly Ranchers, so I'm actually using Cough Drops. I just smashed them with my gauntlet and then placed them into some cupcake liners. God, I had to shoot this part like so many times. Uh, but it, it looks cool on camera. Place them onto a baking tray and I just bake these at 350 degrees for about five minutes, four or five minutes. And one by one, I took them out of the oven and just started to pour them into my mold. If you want to get nice crisp edges, just use a toothpick to move the candy around. But be very careful because this is really hot. And I repeated the process with all of the other stones and I just placed them into the fridge for about 30 minutes so that they would solidify. And then I just popped them out one by one and yo. They're looking pretty good, huh? This process is totally new to me, so I wasn't sure if they were actually gonna come out. Now, there were some stones that I poured a little bit too much into, so I had to refine the edges with a filer. But it's still good, it's good, looking good, huh? Now I set those aside and I started working on my cake again. Because of like the ugly black gray, oh god, this buttercream, I decided to give this a fix-it coat of buttercream, just so that it, it would look whiter and not super dirty <laughs> and it actually worked great because it made sure that all the inconsistencies I had on my cake wouldn't show through the fondant Now this went back into the fridge again to set up and then I took it out and I started to add all of my fondant gauntlet game strong huh now I'm using a rusted brown actually let's look it up ooh it's like a Moroccan spice color it's not a pretty color. I don't know why you'd paint a wall this color, but it's available. The exact color doesn't really matter because this is going to be painted with luster dust at the end. After I placed on the trim of fondant, I started to work my way up the cake. I built these pieces about 30 minutes prior so that they'd be easier to put on and I wouldn't have to think about how all of the shapes fit together. And I used my gauntlet to put on some of the pieces of fondant, but in actuality I had to lay it down and just use both hands to make sure that each piece was going on where it was supposed to. I tried, man, it's just, it's, just, it's useless. I 
placed two pieces on each side and then I covered the back with a single piece of fondant. Now I wrapped his fingers with a large piece of fondant and using some sculpting tools, I just worked the fondant in between each finger. And I also created some wrinkles right between the thumb and the index finger. And this was kind of nerve wracking because I was scared the fondant was going to tear but I was really gentle with my sculpting tool. After that I started to place on all of my fondant detail pieces. For all these pieces I let my fondant sit out for about 2 hours just so that they'll crust. Which means that when I start to cut them, I'm guaranteed this extremely sharp edge. So I decided that I wanted to build this cake like an actual gauntlet. So I treated each piece of fondant as if it were materials of armor. I really wanted to feel like I was creating a weapon and not building a cake. Now for the back of his hand, uh, I attached a large piece of fondant and I sort of just attached it to the other pieces of fondant with some magic sauce. And then I placed it into the fridge for about 5 minutes. And when I took it out, it was easier to carve straight edges. Because the fondant was cold, it stiffened up and it stayed hard through the entire process. That's what she Now I added more armored elements to his thumb joint. And I didn't want these to be completely flat. So I'm using some sculpting tool just to give them a little bit of texture and detail. I messed up on his palm too. There was like this bald spot. So I just decided to cover it with more fondant. It's like the story of my life. Like, you mess up on something? Just put something over it and pretend it isn't there anymore. <laughs> now for each finger, I wrapped them with another piece of fondant and I just layered them on top of each other to make it look like the armor that's on his fingers. Now usually I'm like very particular about where I put the magic sauce because the magic sauce changes the quality of the fondant on the outside. But because this is getting painted, I was like, I ain't gonna worry about none. I tried using my gauntlet to apply all of these pieces, but it was that it didn't work out. But you know what did work out was painting. Painting magic sauce. I added some trim to all of my armor. This took a long time because I had to cut each piece individually so that it fit perfectly and seamlessly when it was joined with another piece of fondant. It wasn't fun. <laughs> Now some of the trim wasn't flat, it was like a fondant rope. So I used my fondant extruder to get that effect. Now this video is sponsored by me. Those are my hands. And those hands also created all of these designs that you can find at my Koala Pub store. Ooh, do you like this? Boo boo, I think this would look so cute on you. <laughs> all proceeds go to helping me fund and run this channel. Now if you want to recreate this cake, I did take a lot of pictures of my gauntlet. I posted them on my Facebook page so that you can take the pictures, you can size them up, size them down, and create the gauntlet size that you want to recreate. If you create this cake, I want to see pictures though. If I'm helping you, I want to see pictures. You better show me some pictures. Why well, gotta be so aggressive with it, I don't know. Now each stone sort of has like this placement frame. And the hardest one to create was for the mine stone. So first I used a template so I knew exactly where the stone was going to be placed. And then to create the frame, I used three different types of fondant. I was really excited after I finished the mine stone because I could see everything coming together and it was just so good. It looks so pretty. I'm probably going to praise myself a lot because I can't believe I made this. I still can't, I just, I can't. I can't believe I went from like this cake to like this cake. It's, yeah, I just, I, just, I don't know. <laughs> I've grown so much, but I can only attribute all of my growth to all the other cake creators on this platform. It's like if I were to win an Oscar, I would just give all of them a shout out. I'd like to thank Yolanda Gump, uh, Zoe, Sharon, The Baking, Cookies, Cupcakes, Cardio. You're the real MVP. Now I used templates so I knew exactly where the knuckle stones were going to be. And then I gave those a trim of some fondant as well. And voila, all of my fondant work is complete. Hallelujah! This took forever. With all my fondant work done, it was time to paint this baby. And you know what? With some hot glue gun, this baby is a good painter. Half good, half ass 
painter. <laughs> now I mix a little bit of gold and bronze luster dust in some magic sauce and just started to paint using my gauntlet. It's working you guys, it's, it's taking forever but it's working. So I'm curious, do you guys think I got my money's worth with this gauntlet? Did it help at all? Or do you think it hurt the video? Once I finished painting, it was time to place in all of the stones. So momentous, just like this movie is gonna be. And voila, it's looking so good. Da -da -da -da. Look at that. It's so crazy looking. Now this is definitely one of the more complex cakes that I've created, but it was totally worth it. And it's funny because I feel like I was at a disadvantage most of the time I was making this because I was only doing it with one hand. Now I'm excited about Infinity War. It's been like 10 years coming, man. I made a lot of stuff, so I made a playlist with all of the things that I created for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments what you thought about Infinity War. How did you feel about dying? That was crazy, huh? And then when died too? Oh, my mind was blown. I love you guys. I will see you very soon.